In the last few years, Warner Brothers Studios have started a new continuity line of DC animated original movies, and I was wondering the other day how much money are these films actually making. After all, Warner Bros are releasing several a year now, so there must be quite a lot of profit involved. So I put together this video to explain how much money they have made. First of all, let me say that this is just the new 52 continuity of animated DC movies and no others, and that these profits are of Blu-ray and DVD sales in America only, as they were the most accurate profits I could find and they don't include any money made from other merchandise sold. And of course, they are only estimates, as Warner Bros. do not like to release their film's profits to the public. And this film is only for the movies released up to the year 2016, and no films after this date, including the recently released Justice League Dark, as there hasn't been enough time for these films' profits to accumulate and be released. First of the new movies is Batman vs. Robin. This movie features Batman and his son Damian Wayne having a falling out with one another, most likely because the movie executives thought that a scene of Batman fighting his own son would sell, even though it really didn't make a lot of sense to be honest. And unfortunately for the executives, this is the least successful of the new 52 movies, making only $3,795,087. Next is a film which was titled Justice League vs Teen Titans, even though the two teams never really fight each other in the proper sense, apart from one brief fight where a few members of the Justice League were possessed. Much like Batman vs Robin, this title only seems to have been chosen because Warner Bros thought it would shock and intrigue a few fans, and encourage them to buy the film. And in this case, it did make a little more money than Batman vs Robin, grossing $3,980,520. Coming in slightly higher than this is Justice League Throne of Atlantis, which tells the origin story of Aquaman, introduces Atlantis to the world, and Aquaman's membership into the Justice League. Even though Aquaman is almost never in any of the new Justice League films, and even when he is in them, he just sits there in the background and has no speaking parts. But then a lot of people do hate Aquaman's character, which may explain why the film only made $3,991,680. Next is Batman Bad Blood, which is probably my favourite of the Bat family's new 52 films, and introduces the character of Batwoman, and the origin of Batwing, and a brief shot of Batgirl as well. The film sees Talia al Ghul following her father, Ra's al Ghul's footsteps, and brainwash Batman in a mad plan to take control of the most powerful people in the world for her own ends. And a new age dawns. Even Ra's al Ghul couldn't achieve this. And it managed to make $4,250,056. The second most profitable of the new 52 movies at the moment is Justice League War, the first of the new 52 movies to be released, and a film which shows the origin of the Justice League, and in some places it is literally word for word the same as the comic book issues it was based on, and made respectable $5,060,431. And before I announce the most profitable movie, I'd first like to give an honourable mention to Justice League Flashpoint Paradox, which is not technically a New 52 movie, but it did set these movies up as the Flash travelling through time and rewrote the timeline, thus creating their universe, and features the New 52 briefly right at the end of the film. And it made a decent... $4,713,400. And the highest grossing New 52 movie is Son of Batman. This was the first of the New 52 films to be all about Batman and introduced his son Damian Wayne as the new Robin. Where are we going? Gotham City. It's time to meet your father. Some people would argue that it made the most money because people either love or hate Damian Wayne. If you love him, then the next films with him released in them were great for you. If you hate him, then it would put you off pretty much all of the other New 52 movies and stop you from buying them, as he's in nearly all of them. And the film made an impressive $6,435,856, making it the only film out of the New 52 to earn over $6 million. And that is how much money the New 52 movies have made through Blu-ray and DVD sales. What do you think of this list? Do you think these movies deserve to make as much money as they did, or that they deserve to make even more money than they did? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.